This video is brought to you by Triple Sleeve TCG. Check out their website at triplesleevetcg.com. Hey guys, welcome back to another deck profile. My name is Richard and today I'm going to be showing you my updated Majesty Lord Blaster deck. So using the main contents of the special deck Majesty or Lord Blaster, along with some other cards that I got from outside sources, such as other trial decks and booster sets, etc. I'm going to be showing you my basically fully optimal version that I would play for this deck. And it's a pretty cookie cutter design, you know, pretty much everyone's gonna be running the same thing, but this is the build that I'm comfortable with and I'm gonna be showing you guys what I went with. So just wanna say for starters, I am using those really, really crappy sleeves um, that came in the set, but I put some um, dragon shields over it. And for the most part, I can't really tell too much of the difference. I can tell a little bit of a difference when I shuffle my other decks with uh, special character sleeves, but for the most part, it's almost undetectable. But if you are using these sleeves, highly recommend get some Dragon Shield clear standard sleeves, put them over these, changes everything. The starter is the shiny, shiniest of shiny Glimes. Uh, doesn't really matter, use Barkle if you want to use Barkle, but I've, I've had this Glime for too long, I just don't want to let go of it. So yeah. Shiny Glime is the starter for this deck. Next up, one copy of Exculpate the Blaster. So we're doing it because it's a blaster. You only need one because you just want to sit on MLB. It's not the finisher of the deck. It can be if you want it to be, but it's mostly there for fun plays. If you want to board wipe your opponent for a turn, you can do that. Um, but yeah, so what Exculpate does is when it's placed, you kind of bust one. Choose one of your choose one of your units from your soul, and you basically send the rest of it to your drop zone. So ideally, it's going to be Blaster Blade. And then at the until at the end of or sorry, when this attacks, it battles all your opponent's units. So meaning they can't intercept. You know everything gets attacked. Uh, other Vanguard skill at the end of the battle that it attacked, you put two cards from your hand in the soul. You retire this unit. Ride a Blaster Blade from your soul stand. And if you could not ride, you lose. So you have to finish the skill. If you could not ride in the Blaster Blade this turn, you just lose. Because you don't have a Vanguard anymore. You retired this Vanguard. Um, yeah, so it's basically there for board wipes. Really funny plays if you just have a bunch of Force Markers on Van. You swing for four attacks. Uh, if you keep the Blaster Blade and Blaster Dark in your soul from shoving both of them from your hand in the soul, your rear guard MLBs can have that extra crit for pressure. So... Yeah. For that. And next up for grade threes. <laughs> this is me flexing, right? Uh, four copies of Majesty Lord Blaster. So Majesty Lord Blaster's skill. Van or rear continuous. If you have Blaster Blade and Blaster Dark in the soul, this gets a crit. And if this is on the Vanguard circle, it gets an additional 5k. And a drive check. So consistent triple drive, consistent 18k defense and has a crit for pressure. And it, the crit's on rear as well. So this card is just, this is dumb. This is a dumb card. But I love the fact that they made it where everyone has access to it. So it's a great card. <laughs> um, yeah, I love this card. It's a Paladin card. The art works great. It's Majesty Lord. Um, when I first got into Vanguard, I thought about building MLB, but I was broke and I didn't want to spend $220 to build a deck that was going to be rotated out anyways because limit break or break ride cards were coming out so it's fun i finally have an mlb deck <laughs> that's viable so that's cool uh oh the other skill almost forgot to read that uh it's when it attacks you put two of your rear guards into the soul and you get two imaginary gifts like it's that easy you just get two force markers and your shove targets can be blaster blade and blaster dark so the fact that you just get force markers out the wazoo <laughs> Crazy. This card's so good. All right, those are the only grade threes you run in the deck because you do not want to ride anything else. There's no other alternative. Plus, it's really easy to search, so you're you're chilling. The four the four MLB is great. Uh, next up, we got four copies of the King himself, Blaster Blade. Blaster Blade skill, Vanguard Circle. If you have four more rearguards, gets a crit. So that can be important for your exculpate turns. Um, do you want a grade two rush? Boom, Blaster Blade, it's your Vanguard ride target for the extra crit. 
And the other skill is when it's placed, you combo one, soul blast one, choose one of your opponent's front row rear guards, and retire it. Uh, in this deck, that actually could be very viable because MLB doesn't have any counter blasts, and the only other card in this deck that has a counter blast, or the only other cards that have counter blasts are Allen, Blaster Dark, and, you know, Trumpeter. So you can you can really abuse those counter blasts if you want to, you know. So feel free to go at it with the retire skills in this deck. So four copies of Blade, because you need it for MLB and for searching. And then next up, four copies of Blaster Dark. But this Blaster Dark is special because it has that continuous skill right there. This card is also a Royal Paladin. This means that you cannot use past Blaster Darks in this standard deck. So, yeah, you need the one from this set to play it. But you're going to buy this set anyways to get the MLB, so you will have a play set. Um, if you guys are curious at what the contents are of the... Um, uh, special deck for Majesty Lord Blaster. I do have an unboxing video you guys can check out so you can see what is in that so you guys get an idea of what you need to get that's already in the box and what other cards that are outside of that special deck that you need to get. So Blaster Dark skill is Van or Rear. When you when plays Count Blast 1, your opponent chooses a card, chooses one of the rear guards and retires it. So it's Count Blast 1, but your opponent gets to choose. This makes a really good right target because your opponent only has one rear guard. It will guarantee a kill. The other skill is Vanguard Circle, once per turn. If your opponent has no rear cards, discard a card from your hand and this gets a drive check until the end of the turn. So, great ride target because you know, you can twin drive when you're on van and uh, its other skill just lets you help retire rear guards. So that's cool. Uh, we love, <laughs> we love non-United Sanctuary mechanics in a United Sanctuary deck such as retiring. Um, yeah, but you do, reminder, you do need to have the one that says Royal Paladin in its skill. And I like this artwork a lot because I really feel like it accentuates like the dark of Blaster Dark. And it reminds me of the um, the Revenger art from the uh, Blaster Dark Revenger. So I really like this art a lot. Next up, we're running three copies of Star Car Trumpeter, which is in the special set. So Star Call's skill is when it's placed, you can blast one, soul blast one, return a card with blaster, and a card named when light and darkness intersects from your drop, each from, from your drop zone back to your hand. And then the other skill is if you have a vanguard with blaster in its name, this gets boost. So reason this is really good is the order card when light, when light and darkness intersects is really good for toolboxing your deck and thinning out for triggers. It also searches out the, whatever target you might be missing for MLB skill. So being able to consistently get that back from your drop zone makes some really helpful plays. So the fact you can just get an order back, plus a blaster, you know? Uh, you know what has blaster and people like to kill off on the rear guard circle a lot? This thing, because it has an extra crit. So getting this back into your hand, really helpful. Uh, if for whatever reason Exculpate ended up in your drop zone, boom, you just get it back. So really, really good toolboxy card. I don't think you need four of it because you're going to be seeing a lot of blasters in general. And so I don't think it's too much a priority. Plus, you use it maybe twice in a game from my experience. So it's just good at three. You know, you want to have room for other stuff in your deck. Uh, speaking of room for other stuff in the deck, I'm running three copies of Absolute Blade Knight Livero. So Livero's skill is one of the best skills in this game, in my personal opinion, but let's read it for you guys. Van or rear, when placed, counterblast one, search your deck for any grade two card. Call it to an open rear, shuffle your deck. If you have no face-up damage, you pay a soul blast instead. So you're guaranteed to play the cost for this card because you will absolutely have soul because of MLB. So you will be able to pay the cost for this card, no matter what, always. So it's a guaranteed ability, which I love. Uh, the other cool thing about this card is it just says in the card text, you call a grade two card, not a unit. You know, what a, you know what's a grade two card? Boom. So why is that important? The minute you call an, a grade two order card to a rear guard circle, it is immediately sent to the drop zone. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. I'm pretty sure. So, 
that's something you guys can look into. And why is getting this in your drop zone important? Because boom, you can use star call to pop it back. So that's a really helpful play that you can do. If you really are, if you're like, oh, I really need this card, but I only have this and I don't have this on my drop, that is an option that you can do. Um, pretty unlikely that you do that because you're most likely going to use this to search out Blaster Blade, Blaster Dark, or even Star Call if you just, you know, need a booster or something to suck into the soul because this just gets you a card for a soul blast, which is really nice. So this card, really, really, really helpful in the deck. So I absolutely recommend that you get this for your Majesty Lord Blaster deck. So next up for that order card that I showed off earlier, I'm only running three copies of When Light and Darkness Intersects. It comes with three in the uh, special deck, so you're fine with the three. You really don't need four. Um, so what it does is you resolve the following effects. You resolve one of the following effects below. Uh, so you have three options. So if you have Blaster Blade on Van or Rear, you search for Blaster Dark, add it to your hand. If you have Blaster Dark on Van or Rear, search for Blaster Blade, add it to your hand. If Blaster Blade and Blaster Dark are already on your van and rear, like you have both on the board, you search for MLB and add it to your hand. So deck thinning, you're guaranteed to search out a card with this card for the most part because seeing an, a Blaster Blade or a Blaster Dark is almost guaranteed. Uh, it's very smart for them not to give it like, a, oh, if, you're on, if you have MLB, you get to search something because you'll always be on MLB. So it's a guaranteed search. But at least, you know, you have to have a Blaster Blade or Blaster Dark out on the board to use it. But, you know, Lavarlo takes care of that because you just go boop, search a Blaster Blade or Blaster Dark, and then use this to search the other one. And you just got three free units for the cost of a Soul Blast, basically. <laughs> like, it's really, really good. This dark, this dark, this deck has a lot of toolboxing capability, which I think is what makes it one a really competitive, viable deck right now. It's too bad that locals just don't exist because of COVID-19, so that's a shame. On to the grade ones. Four copies of Wingo Brave. Uh, at one point I was running only three just because this list seemed like you didn't really search, you didn't need to search out blasters that often, but honestly in the grade one lineup, there's so much room to mess around with it that you can really make it how whatever ratio you want. If you want to run two Wingle Braves and something else, that's fine. But for consistency sake, and just because Wingle Brave has that on hit effect, uh, I want to maximize seeing it on my grade one ride turns. So uh, Wingle Brave skill is van or rear. When it attack, when the attack or the attack that it boosts hits a vanguard, you look at top seven cards, search your deck for a blaster, and add it to your hand and shuffle your deck. So, any blaster, uh, <laughs> you know, Exculpate, Blaster Blade, Blaster Dark. Uh, if you were literally searching for that last grade three in your hand, you're like, oh no, I need MLB, boom, you got it. So, you got MLB. So, uh, it reminds me a lot of the. Uh, I think it was like Wingle Youth card that came in the Blaster Blade Exceed Legend deck. And I knew people were running for that because the fact that it this has the same skill except that one only searched a Blaster Blade, I believe. I believe, I'm pretty sure. So the fact that you had now have a card with a more power, better shield, and it's has the basically the same ability, and you get to search any blaster from the top seven. And it doesn't go into soul, so you have you get to keep it on the board after it hits. I think this is a really great card, and I would run four. I am running four, obviously. So, really loving this card on its um, toolbox and capabilities there. Next up, I'm running four copies of Knight Squire Allen. The reason I'm running Allen instead of Marin, I wasn't originally thinking about running Marin, but I'm going to read off Allen's effect, and then I'll explain the difference between the two. So, when placed, you can blast one. Call up to one card from your hand with grade less than or equal to your vanguard. And if you call the card, you draw a card, and this gets 3k. So Marin's skill is basically similar, except you don't have to place it. It's just a uh, rearguard circle once per turn. Marin's skill is if a unit is placed in the same column, so just placed in the same column, whatever it is, you counterblast one, 
this gets 3k, Marin gets 3k, and you draw a card. So the reason I like Alan better is because with Marin, Marin has to stay on a left or a right column. So there, and you also have to call something in front of it to proc its ability. So yeah, it's the once per turn, but you have to call it, call another car, then you do the same thing, which is what Alan does, but it can only work on the left or the right because it has to be a rear guard. With Alan, what I like about it is um, if I want my left or my right column to stay how it is, because with MLB, you only suck up two rear guards. When you get to a certain point with your force markers, you don't start attacking from left to right or right to left. You start going van first, rear guards last. So when you do that, you typically want to suck up two rear guards from the back row because you're going to be getting two force markers anyways. Whatever booster that unit over here was getting, it's going to substitute it with the force marker, so you're fine. So I like how Allen lets me be able to plop it down anywhere, call a card, draw a card, you know, plus more, call another card if, if I really need that extra card from the, from the effect, um, and then I can just suck it up. And then I won't feel guilty about losing that card because, you know, I don't feel like I didn't abuse it or use it enough. So with Marin, I feel like there was that struggle where I was like, oh, I need to call it down, I need to proc its ability, and then I don't want to lose Marin because I don't want to suck it into the soul because then I can't use it more in the future, blah, blah, blah. But I just like Alan because, you know, you can just suck it up and then it's gone. So if that argument didn't really make sense, it doesn't really, really matter. Just run Marin. Marin works fine too. But for me personally, I just like Alan just because of the versatility of it. So they pretty much do the same thing. I just think Alan has that smidge little bit more of like what it can do versus what Marin can do. So it's up to you. Regardless, it doesn't matter. You're going to be sucking these things up in the soul anyways. All right. Lastly, or almost lastly, we've got three more grade ones coming up. Two of them being Blaster Javelin. I was doing Blaster Dagger first, but I do like Blaster Javelin just a little bit more. Uh, mostly for that first skill, which is during the battle that it boosts, if you have a Vanguard Blaster or Arc Saver, it gets 2k. That's it. It's just a 10k booster, right? Other skill is when it boosts, if you have six different blasters, which you will never will have in this deck, it can bind your opponent's front row, but, you know, that skill is never going off. The reason I decided to do Blaster Javelin over cards like Blaster Dagger or even Sisalus, the, the Grade 3 Searcher Grade 1, which you can run, is because it is a blaster. So that means that you can actually search it out if it's proc with Wingo Brave. So now you have a 10k shield in your hand. And the reason I'm running this instead of Blaster Dagger, which was at the end of the battle that um, your Vanguard with Blaster's name hits, you bounce it back to your hand. I'm running Javelin for that extra 2k, making it a 10k booster. So if I do have that one column where I'm not sucking up rear guards, I'll make a column like this. And that extra 2k can be the difference between winning and not winning if your opponent is 5k short. So you want to take all the numbers you can get to hit those, those magic numbers. So like if we're not including force markers, this is a 23k column versus just a 21, which it would have been with Blaster Dagger. Um, Sisalus will make it more, but Sisalus also isn't the blaster that can't be searched out. So the middle ground between the two is Blaster Javelin, personal opinion. So yeah, it's also a blaster deck, so we gotta run them blasters. Lastly for grade ones, I'm running one copy of Niverheart Tristan. Why? Because it searches out a card for a counter blast, which is really good. It searches out Blaster Blade, so if you need Blaster Blade to put into your soul, boom, you got it. If you have the order card in your hand and then Tristan, you just go boop, call Tristan, get Blaster Blade, call Blaster Blade, use the other order card, get Blaster Dark, boom. You have Blaster Blade and Blaster Dark guaranteed. Um, Tristan also helps set up for Exculpate if you don't have that Blaster Blade in your hand. And if it's not in your soul for some reason, that would be ridiculous. But it does allow you to set up to have, you know, Blaster Blade for those plays. So I only have it at one copy because you really don't need it. 
but if you do know for a fact you do have a blaster blade in your deck, this is just a simple counter blast, get it out, boom, easy. So I like it at the one. So that was it for the normal units. Now I'm just going to the triggers. Uh, I am running eight crits, but I'm just doing my own little little assortment, just how I like them. Just because I like I like the artwork for these guys. So two flogals, three upanas, three loos, but the start deck gives you four flogals, four loos, so you are fine. But you know, I like my trigger lineup, guys. And I like my full art flogal that I got as a one of in that one box I opened. Uh, next up, four draw trigger PGs, which also come in the <laughs> the special deck. So, like I said, if you haven't watched my other video, I will just spoil it for you. You get four of these as a common rarity in that set, so you're you're good. You don't have to worry about getting your alt mile trial decks or scrounging around for the reprints of these. You just you just get four, easy. So. Draw PG, it's a PG, so when it's placed, you discard a card, something gets protected, and it's a draw trigger. You're going to be triple driving out the wazoo, so you will always have fodder for this, and you'll basically almost see it all the time. And, yeah, pretty pretty just standard trigger line up there. 8 crit, 4 draw PG, and lastly, of course, the 4 heal triggers. So we're doing the, the Yggdrasil made in lane because, you know... The, the Aichi Royal deck, you gotta have the Aichi heal. Um, uh, yeah, comes in the start deck too, so you're guaranteed to get these heals. That was it for the main deck. Um, there's not really much I really wanna go into in terms of combinations, cause the deck pretty much explains it all for itself. The only thing I guess I would say is something that I would like to do if I'm playing against a deck is Let's say a certain combo you can do is if you're riding Blaster Blade or Blaster Dark and you have MLB in your hand but you don't have the other grade 2 like Blaster Blade or Blaster Dark, the Livarlo is the substitute, right? So, and the other thing too is making combinations between Livarlo and Allen. For example, if this is a face-up card in your damage zone, you have a grade 2 Vanguard, you call Allen, you counter blast. You call Levaro, you get to draw your card, and because you have no face of damage, you just Soul Blast for Levaro's skill to resolve it, to search out whatever grade 2 you're missing. Like if you're on Blaster Blade for your Vanguard, you need Blaster Dark for MLB skill. Now you have both ready for when you suck them up for Majesty Lord Blaster. So simple things like that, They're, they kind of speak for themselves, but you guys will get the feel of the deck as you play it. But overall, this deck is just stupid. It's stupid, like, aggressive, stupid consistent, and stupid fun. That's what we love about Vanguard standard decks, right? Um, that's really it for the deck profile. Um, I will say, get a bunch of Force Markers. You will need at least eight Force 1 gifts, minimum. <laughs> Maybe get ten just in case, because you, you make a lot of those things in this deck, because... You just get two per turn, so. Um, thanks again for watching, and I hope you all enjoyed it. If you guys have any comments, recommendations, questions, concerns, uh, just let me know in the comments section below, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.